And we are live. Welcome to another edition of DT Live. Tonight's episode is just going to be a quick live stream, a 30 minute Q&A session with you guys. I'm going to interact with you guys here in the YouTube chat. I haven't done one of these kinds of streams in a while and I thought this would be fun. It's a bit of an impromptu stream, obviously, unannounced. Um, one of the things, one of the reasons why I decided to do this this evening is I've, I've been away from the house all day, didn't have anything planned to do on the channel, and I thought, you know what, this would be fun. So we will wait a couple of minutes for folks to get here. Again, I didn't give out any kind of heads up, no warning for this at all. I do have my Corona Extra to fight off the virus. <laughs> I shouldn't say that, though. Uh, apparently, Google, uh, YouTube, has some algorithms. They pretty much demonetize any video that mentions that particular subject. So, we probably shouldn't mention the bug. So, uh, and let me get everything straight here in OBS. Make sure everything looks good. One of the things is this chat is not the correct chat here so guys give me just a second and let me get my YouTube chat to appear here in this scene in OBS if I can get it to work correctly the plugin that I use to actually get this chat sometimes causes me issues yesterday I did the uh, gaming night the community game night and I didn't monitor that YouTube uh, chat at all while we were gaming. So I did like an hour and a half gaming stream, but I never really looked at the YouTube stream and the chat in this scene here. <laughs> it was a similar scene here, but, you know, with us gaming, it was frozen for the entire 90 minute stream. So <laughs> it's a, a bit of an issue. And that happens a lot with this particular plugin. This plugin is called OBS Browser Plugin. It's in the AUR, and it basically allows you to just get the URL from the YouTube pop-out chat window, and then you can theme it with your own custom CSS. It's, it's a pretty neat little plugin if it worked correctly. Uh, sometimes it does not work correctly, though. All right. So, again, unannounced. Surprise live stream. I like doing these though. I, I typically don't give a heads up for for my live streams. Typically, I just stream when I feel like it. The only thing, only time I give you guys a heads up, obviously, the once a month patrons chat. I, I usually give like two days notice on that one, just you know, so everybody knows exactly when to be there. The community game nights, you know, I don't do those very often, but when I do those, I try to give you guys heads up. But typically, my live streams are just, hey, I happen to have a little free time. Let's start a stream. All right, let's go ahead and get into some questions here. Since I don't really have a real topic this evening, we, we may get into some topics, but we'll see. Yeah, so we have David Gomez and uh, Bread Moth is in the chat. How you guys doing? Yeah, install Gentoo, not in a 30-minute live stream. <laughs> uh, if I had a couple hours, maybe. With the Threadripper, we could probably make that happen in a couple hours. Three hours, for sure, we'd be good. Because I'd have to talk through some stuff, you know. Yeah, Big Pod, how you doing, sir? Yeah, you got to get some sleep? Yeah, me too. Yeah, Corona's nice, but you prefer Takati. Okay. Yeah, Takati's not bad. I like Dos Equis. Actually, I, I like Modelo. <laughs> I like it all. So, uh, yeah, should I adopt the suckless philosophy as Tarek? Um, I mean, it's up to you. You got to figure out what you want to do. As far as the suckless philosophy, I could take it or leave it. I like being kind of minimal, but I don't like being minimal to the point of it being kind of stupid. And I think the, the suckless guys sometimes take things to extremes for example they are so minimal that their window manager dwm and their terminal st are really not usable until you patch it and i don't think that is a good philosophy the fact that you have to patch the st terminal to get scroll back which is a feature like everyone <laughs> that's going to want in their term. I don't, uh, I don't think there's a single person alive that doesn't want the ability to scroll back through their terminal. 
but you actually have to patch ST to get that functionality, right? Uh, same thing with DWM. One of the patches that I always add to DWM is being able to rotate the windows through the stack. You know, if let me switch scenes here and I show you kind of what I'm talking about. So if I had three windows open here, I'm going to open H top in one of them. But the ability to actually rotate that window that I'm highlighting through the stack, you know, you have to patch DWM <laughs> to do that. As crazy as that sounds, because that's a, a standard feature in every tiling window manager I've ever used. But So be prepared. I mean, if you want to check out the suckless tools, just realize it's going to be a little different. You know, I think some people go into it and they're they're not quite ready for what that experience is going to be like. Because you're going to have to patch all of their software pretty much. None of their programs I, I just use without patching. I could use D menu without patching it. I have a patch D menu, but I could use D menu unpatched if I wanted to. And I could use tabbed without patching it. Can't really use DWM, ST, or Surf without patching those, though. All right, thoughts on NeoVim. My thoughts on NeoVim as an end user is it's basically just like Vim. So as an end user, you wouldn't know, notice any difference. Now, to people that maybe want to contribute code, you know, to the project, work on the project, there's a difference. The code base is completely different. NeoVim is basically a modern uh, re-implementation of Vim. Cleaning up that ancient code base that is Vim. I mean, that's the whole idea behind NeoVim. The other reason NeoVim exists is because um, Vim is run by one man, Bram Molinar. He's basically the malevolent dictator, right? He's that guy that just runs that project. And what he says goes, and he's not always, I guess welcoming for change in Vim, so don't be surprised if you submit something and it's rejected, where the NeoVim guys are really trying to push ahead. All right, let me get back to the chat. I'm not sure how many people we will have here this evening for a bit of an unscheduled chat, which is always nice because you know we shouldn't get a gigantic crowd here, so I can actually read some of the chat. Once you get a few hundred people here, it can be quite a mess to to keep up with the questions. Can you and Luke do a video chat also from Tarek? We have done one in the past, uh, like a year ago on his channel. Although I mentioned that the other day and you guys said you couldn't find it on YouTube. He may have deleted it from his channel or he may have set it to a private video because I, I couldn't find it either on YouTube. I'm sure if you, you searched around, you'd probably find it, but it... You know, we've done one in the past. I imagine we will do another one in the future at some point. The problem is Luke for doing like a live stream with somebody. Like if he wanted to appear on camera with me during a live stream, he would have to be somewhere with Internet. And Luke Smith moved out to the woods about a year ago. <laughs> so out in the middle of the woods with bad Internet or no Internet, possibly. I'm not sure. Now, how are you liking the microphone compared compared to the blue one you had before? Different styles of microphone. So this is the uh, Electro Voice RE twenty seven ND. It's a great microphone. It's a dynamic microphone. So a dynamic microphone should pick up theoretically less background noise. It's going to have a different kind of sound to it. The blue baby bottle right behind me. That I used for so long. Uh, very nice microphone too. Different style of microphone. It's a condenser microphone. I like the sound on the blue baby bottle better. It's going to pick up more background noise. I would rather use the, uh, the blue baby bottle if I had a treated room. Where I didn't have to worry about all the background noise. Other noises in the house from the street outside. And the person mowing their yard next door. I'd probably prefer to use that one. To be honest, it's, condenser mics typically have a better sound, just the nature of them. Dynamic mics are more broadcast type mics because they kind of filter out all of that, that noise from the background. So 
I like both mics. <laughs> as far as uh, what is the better mic, it would be, depend on the situation. Like so many other things, it de depends on the situation. If I had the perfect recording studio, I would prefer to use the Blue Baby bottle. Yeah, so Ron says, whoa, doing a YouTube drive-by. <laughs> yep. Yeah, I need to do more of these. I didn't have anything planned on the channel today. I actually have been away all day uh, seeing some, some family that lives nearby me. Been spending a lot more time outdoors. Today I spent a lot of time out in the woods. Came across some some alligators. <laughs> oh, and some snakes. Uh, about a three foot long king snake <laughs> uh, slithered by me. Should have took a picture. I didn't think to take pictures. Helping my a family member do some gardening, got some land, planting some stuff, getting ready, just in case, right? Yeah, suckless is too rude, says Mr. Step. Well, I don't know about the suckless guys being rude. You know, they just have what they want to do. Uh, obviously, it's not for everybody. They say, hey, they don't want noobs to use their software. I mean, they, they straight up say it. We want to make this hard to use <laughs> because we really don't want noobs to start joining in. It's basically, you know, their point to that. And if that's what they want, that's what they want. I certainly don't mind folks being honest and upfront about that if that's what they want. It's better than... Pretending like you're going to be welcoming to noobs and then they get there and then you're mean to them, right? Uh, I think that's the worst way to go. Now, see, Keep It Techie is in the chat. How you doing, Josh? Now, do you still use BSPWM much? No, I don't use BSPWM much. Uh, when somebody was asking me about i3, i3 and BSPWM are different types of tiling window managers than what I like to use. I3 and BSPWM are manual tilers, meaning typically, you know, when you get to your desktop and you want to open new windows, so if I open this window and then if I open a second window, I have to decide where that window is going to be. Is it going to appear on the right, the left, underneath, on top? I prefer dynamic tilers. Dynamic tilers include DWM, which actually stands for Dynamic Window Manager, and that's what I'm in today. Xmonad is a dynamic tiler. Qtile is a dynamic tiler. Awesome is a dynamic tiler. And what these do is it's already predetermined. Every single window that I'm going to open from here on out, I know where it's going to appear. I don't have to think about hitting this key combination to make the window appear on the right or on the left or anything. I just know the next window I, I open will divide the screen in half and appear on the right. That's where that window will appear. I know the next window is going to divide that stack on the right in half and appear at the bottom. I know, or, or in this case, at the top, actually. My, my cursor was there. It probably should have pushed it to the bottom. But anyway, you, well, and now I'm on the wrong monitor because I moved the mouse. But, you know, I know where these windows are going to appear, right? That layout's predetermined. Every single window has no other choice but to appear where it appears. I3 and BSPWM are not like that. And, and I don't, those are not my kind of window managers. I can use them. I mean, I used I3 for a month and I used BSPWM for a month. I3 was okay. BSPWM, I didn't mind. I actually found B, BSPWM to be pretty okay. I didn't hate it. But I prefer having set layouts, you know, like in DWM, you know, I have that master and stack layout and Xmonad, Qtile, the same thing. Their default layout is that master and stack layout that you just saw. If I want to, I can switch to a monocle layout where every window just stacks on top of each other. Or a grid layout where it divides the screen into equal grids. So all you do is you have a key combination to switch to a particular layout that you like. And then when you start opening your windows, you know where all the windows are always going to appear.
Now, what's a great media player for Arch? Well, I mean, a great media player for Arch would be a great media player for any Linux distro. But good media players. Well, are we talking music or are we talking video? Or I guess both, especially if we're talking video player. VLC, right? <laughs> VLC is kind of the standard. We're talking strictly music. You guys know I love Dead Beef. I like uh, a minimal GTK music player called Dead Beef. In fact, I could open up Dead Beef. I did a video on Dead Beef oh, about a month ago. Ooh. Oh, we don't want to uh, play anything. <laughs> I didn't realize that was going to auto-play when I launched it. I forgot I had that set up like that. Dead Beef is great, though. Uh, other GTK music players would include... Rhythm Box is really good. Uh, you like a cute uh, music player. Clementine is really good. Cantata is also really good, but Cantata requires MPD, the music player daemon. So you may or may not want to go that route. Uh, Audacious is good for an old school kind of win out kind of clone. Audacious is really nice. We are rich and great media players in Linux. We do not have a shortage on good music players or good video players. For video, if you want something minimal, MPV is what everybody goes with. If you want something that just handles everything, VLC is kind of what everybody goes with. You want something kind of in between, uh, SM player is not bad. I've used it in the past. Let's see. Catching back up on some of the chat I missed. Uh, I am not previewing YouTube here, so I do apologize if I, if I miss some stuff here. All right. Let me pull back the chat. All right. So what do you think of Ubuntu? Me personally. Uh, it, it's a fine distro. <laughs> yeah. I'm not one of those people that care too much about the distros, though. I can make anything work. <laughs> so uh, They're all basically the same. I, I, You know, people often ask me, hey, I'm using this distro. What do you think about it? It's good. I mean, if you get it installed, it's good. The only distros, I mean, I've installed hundreds of them, right? The only distros that I've ever not liked, you've never seen on the channel. And that's the ones I, I that were broken. Broken, you can't get them installed. I couldn't even show you guys. Or it was so horribly broken that I, even if I installed it, it just looks so bad. And, you know, I, I don't want to put that on camera. I mean, it's typically like one man jobs, you know, Joe Bob's OS. <laughs> but all the the real distros that you guys know, uh, I don't care what it is. Any of the top 100 that you guys see on Distro Watch, I, uh, you guys ask me about them all. Yeah, they're all good. You can you can use any of them. Catch some gar and make gar balls, <laughs> says Leviticus. Uh, I haven't had those in years. Um. Gar is not the best. <laughs> it's all right. It, it'll do in a pinch, but like in this part of the world, and like if I was, you know, if I was somewhere where I thought I could catch some gar, I promise you there'd be some catfish, catfish in there somewhere too. <laughs> it's much better eating. <laughs> uh. Also, it's getting time of year where, you know, I can catch a little bit of bass around here. getting about that time of year where what we here locally call white perch most people call crappie in other parts of of the country um yeah there's just a there's a lot better eating fish than a gar <laughs> yeah and for those of you not familiar with it, uh, gar it's a very large fish with a long snout with some nasty teeth and they get huge um, there's a species of gar there's, there's a bunch of species of gar but uh, one's down here in louisiana the alligator gar kind of looks like an alligator when he's in the water and they get you know several feet long 
I think the record, as far as somebody catching one on a rod and reel, somebody years ago caught one, I want to say that was over 300 pounds and was, I want to say it was something like 10 feet long. It, it's a big fish and it's mean and it's nasty <laughs> and it's not the best to eat. And what's funny is the aquarium trade. I actually, you know, see people like online, you know, selling like baby gar or what, you know, it's not like people in Louisiana going and catching them and selling, but look, there's people around the world that like these big monstrous fish to put in their aquariums. And uh, I think some of these people, even if you have a 500 gallon aquarium, some of these people don't realize how big some of these fish get. <laughs> Like this fish is, is so big, you know, full grown, literally anything less than an outdoor pool is, is too small for a fish like this, but, but people try to keep them. I think it's said. Yeah. What's your opinion on Manjaro architect? I have no opinion on it. Haven't tried it. Uh, I'm sure it's fine. It's just another way to install Manjaro, right? As long as you get Manjaro installed properly with it, I'm sure it's good. So, uh, yeah. Uh, I know that's, that's not a great answer. As far, but when you guys ask me about these distros, like, really, I, I, I don't come across bad distros. I, as long as you get the distro to install, then everything else is fine. Because at that point... I have a shill, right? I have I have the command line. Everything else is the same. Uh, yeah, you, from that point, you can work out anything. So, uh, uh, let's see. Did Luke Smith and DT collab? Yeah, you guys keep asking me, me about that. Yeah, we did one uh, a while back. I want to say about April or May of last year, and it was the week he was leaving to move to the woods. And it was the last time he was going to have working internet. <laughs> so that was when we did it. So. Let's see. DT, have you tried writing an instruction set emulator? I have not. Let's see. DT, I adopted your hairstyle since quarantine. <laughs> uh, yeah, once you start shaving your head, it's hard to go back. But I mentioned I was outside all day mostly in the woods but you know occasionally i was out in the sun so i did catch a little sun today i'm, I'm not really that red but it is very very easy to burn the top of your head so be careful if you, you guys that do shave your head uh you really anytime you do anything if you are going to be out in the sun for more than 30 minutes wear a hat not even kidding wear a hat It's something you've never had to worry about when you had hair, but trust me. <laughs> uh, from this moment forth, you know, the rest of your life, wear a hat if you're going to be out in the sun. You're going to regret it, I'm telling you. All right. Yeah, that's, uh, somebody is saying DWM is customized through editing its sor source code. That's correct. The source code is the config. So instead of having, you know, DWM RC, you know, in your dot config folder, you just edit it. No, no, no. You don't do any of that. You edit the DWM source code, recompile, and then restart DWM, which by default, DWM doesn't have the ability to be restarted live. <laughs> if you don't patch it, you actually have to exit DWM and then log back into DWM every time you patch it. That's annoying. Yeah, Temple OS is bad because you can't install it on hardware. Yeah, but why would you want to? <laughs> I mean, really. Uh, uh, hi, DT, says Sefa. Hi. Mr. Gaffs, what is your main job? Well, you're looking at it currently. This is it. Uh, as far as uh, what has been my main job, retail here lately. Let's see. Yeah, thoughts on AI and machine learning. I don't have much of a thought on that yet. 
Oh, here's a good one. Open Scholar, what are your thoughts on using the Chromium web browser? Well, it is open source, but it is still based on Google technology. So I personally wouldn't use it. If I was going to use a free and open source browser, a mainstream one, Firefox. Really, that's, I think that's what everybody should be on. Mozilla Firefox. Or a web browser based on that engine. You're using a browser based on, you know, the Chrome web engine. You're just giving Google more power. Google already owns the internet anyway. They own the web. You know, do you really want to keep contributing to that? Plus Firefox, they were res privacy respecting, le less tracking. You know, Fire Firefox is much better in that regards. I know Chromium is not Chrome. It's free and open source software, but still. If you're going to use Chromium, you really should make sure you go and grab the ungoogled Chromium that's out there. There is a stripped down version of Chromium called ungoogled Chromium, and it rips, all, rips out some of the, the Google bits. If I wasn't using uh, Firefox and I wanted to use something based on the Chrome engine, I'd probably use Brave. Because Brave, obviously, is pretty serious about privacy and security. Let's see. DT, have you ever wanted to write your own kernel? No. If I did, I would probably write it in Holy C, though, in honor of Terry Davis. DT, have you done a video of grabbing stuff from GitLab and transferring it to a folder? I am new to Linux. Well, I tell you what, it's such a simple video, I would never make a dedicated video just for that. But let me clear the screen. You know what? Let me pull up a web browser for you, too, while we're here. I'll pull up the Surf browser. Do I have my GitLab page linked anywhere handy here? I'm not sure if this will go to mine or not. Okay, so this is my GitLab. And let's pick a repository I want to download. How about my shell color scripts? And this is, would work the same on GitHub, GitLab, any Git repository. Probably has a button somewhere that says clone. If you click it, you have some URLs. You have one for a URL to use if you're going to clone this with SSH or one to clone it with HTTPS. Why don't you grab that one? Copy it. Paste it in your terminal if you can. Oh, I, I guess I didn't copy it or I didn't copy it to the correct clipboard, but that doesn't matter. I actually know the URL. Then type git clone and then that URL which in my case would be https gitlab.com slash dwt1 slash shell dash color dash scripts. And it's complaining that that already exists in this directory because it already exists in this directory. If I scroll up here, shell's color scripts is actually right there. But that's how that would work. Let me CD into my downloads folder, though. Let's ls to make sure that I don't have shell color scripts in here already. I don't. And I'm going to run that same command. Git clone the URL. That's it. Git clone the URL. That's all you got to do. Do an ls. Shell color scripts. Should be in here somewhere. Right there. If you CD'd into it, did a, do an LS. There's all of that. Piece of cake. From there, you just install it if it, you know, if it's something to install. Now, I think a lot of people when they ask, hey, how do I get something? With GitHub or GitLab, how do I install it on my system? Well, that that's going to vary depending on the program. Every program is different. It depends. Is it even an installable program? If it is, what language is it written in? What is the install process? The install process is going to vary from program to program. So going past what I just showed you be different depending on 
the program. But the good thing is, if you're on GitHub or GitLab, I promise you, they have the instructions right there on the page. They will tell you the exact thing to type into the terminal to actually start the installer. All right, let me, I missed some of the chat here. Let's see. Uh, what even is Temple OS? It's its own completely different operating system that was written by a man named Terry Davis. Terry Davis uh, died recently in the last year. He was schizophrenic, bipolar. He was uh, a very troubled man. His death may or may not have been a suicide. I'm not exactly sure. Uh, he was killed by a train. I know that. I think he stepped in front of a train. But uh, he had some serious mental issues. But like uh, a lot of brilliant people, you know, a lot of a lot of mentally ill people are quite brilliant, you know. And he was a genius. Created his own programming language called Holy C. And he used Holy C to write Temple OS because he said God contacted him and told him to create this operating system, which he called Temple OS. Let's see. Yeah. Let's see. DT, did you ever do LFS or a Hackintosh video? No. I doubt I ever will. Uh, for sure, I will never do a Hackintosh video. YouTube frowns on that. And and why would I show you guys how to run an operating system that is hacking? I mean, why, why would I? <laughs> I, I, w I don't want to promote that garbage. And it's a pain in the rear end to even fool with Hackintosh. It's, you know, it's really hardware sp specific and... There, there's no reason to, to even use Hackintosh. There's no reason to bother with it when Linux exists. There really isn't. You want to run Mac software, go get a Mac. That's just what you should be doing anyway. You're probably not going to be happy with Hackintosh anyway. As far as Linux from scratch, uh, doing videos on it, they would be very long videos that requ require tons of editing and probably multiple videos having to be done on that. And... I don't think most people, even most people that view this channel, and this is kind of a nerdy crowd, most people wouldn't be that interested. You know, Linux from scratch is really a tutorial. It's a it's a manual, right? It's an instruction manual. It's meant for you guys to read and study. It's not the it's not great content, right? <laughs> it wouldn't make great video content. You know, and it's one of those things I don't think, I don't think I, you watching, you know, hours of me playing around with Linux from scratch would help you install Linux from scratch either. I don't think it's, it, it would, I don't think I would solve a lot of problems for people. Like if Linux from scratch is an issue. And if Linux from scratch is not an issue, if you know how to install it, well, I'm not sure why you would want to watch me. Because it would be just a boring video. It would be like watching paint dry. David, are you still using DWM? That's what I'm in at the moment. But it, it varies from when I log in. Uh, when I did my stream last night, the gaming stream, I was in Xmonad, I believe. Or was I in Qtile? I think I was in Qtal, actually. Xmonad, I was in the day before. Yeah, I, I, it depends on what I feel like logging into. Um, and you guys always are asking me, hey, what window manager are you using? Why are you worried about it? <laughs> I mean, I'm being serious. Well, what does it matter? Uh, they're all good. I can make any of them work. I, obviously, I like some more than others. I mentioned i3, BSBWM. They're they're not my favorites because they do things a little differently than things like DWM, Xmode, and Qtile. But what does that matter? That's just my opinion. If you guys want to try i3 or BSBWM, give them a try. You may love them. Many people do. BSBWM, BSBWM seems to be really popular right now. 
when you go to r slash unix porn over on reddit and you see people doing screenshots of their linux systems you're seeing a ton of bspwm out there at the moment it seems like everybody's hopping on that not exactly sure why that's caught on all of a sudden i don't know if it's the latest meme it seems like it though like everybody's on bspwm Which is, it's a good window manager. I actually did enjoy, you know, the, the month or so that I spent on it. Back when I did the obscure window manager project. It was good times. Let's see. Lucinian says, you did a video on Xmonad before, which uses Haskell. Yes. What are your thoughts on this programming language? It's tough to wrap your mind around it. I haven't really tried to learn Haskell. I know enough Haskell to hack on Xmonad. I've been hacking on my Xmonad config for like 12 years. And because it's all in Haskell, you know, I, I kind of know how the config works. And I know how to look up documentation about Haskell. I know how to use the Haskell websites, uh, Hoogle, which is the Haskell search engine. I can usually find answers to any questions I have, but I, I don't, I would never say I know how to do anything in Haskell. I could probably write a hello word kind of program in Haskell if you asked me to, but beyond that, not something I've, I've taken the time to learn or probably would take the time to learn. I'm, Haskell probably wouldn't, I, I, I wouldn't find much of a use for it for what I do, I'm not a programmer by trade, right? So, let's see. As someone currently developing a web app, I can tell you that there are still many bugs in Microsoft Edge. Well, really, <laughs> I never would have guessed there are bugs in Edge. Wow, some breaking news. <laughs> There's bugs in every web browser, but yeah, there's bugs in Microsoft's web browser. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure. Let's see. Hey, DT, what's going on with the live vid? Uh, are we buffering? I'm not actually monitoring the screen. But I don't have control over YouTube servers if there's a problem. The network here, my connection and all, looks good from what I'm seeing. Here in OBS, you know, I... In OBS, you have a little square in one of the bottom corners, and it's green if everything's good, yellow if it's uh, and red if your network connection's bad. Right now, I got a green. So the stream should not be buffering, at least not due to anything on my end. But again, I sometimes YouTube has some bad days. <laughs> yeah, you guys are having a poke at... The person asking about the Git clone, well, you know, you do have new users that are confused about that. But that's all you need to do. Git clone and then the URL of that repository. It's all you ever need. All right. Have you ever played the original Rogue? And that was to me? No, I have not. Mm -mm. I don't even know what Rogue is. I'm sorry. Uh, I'm not a gamer. so <laughs> I am not a gamer at all. Now, what do you think about the future of Python now that it, the creator of it is gone? Well, he's been gone for a while, and Python has millions and millions and millions of people out there probably that work with it daily. Python is way bigger than one guy, so it doesn't even matter. Not even a little bit. I mean, <laughs> that's the truth. Uh, it's kind of like when people ask me about what would happen if Linus Torvalds retired or got sick or died. Uh, Linux is way bigger than Linus Torvalds. Way, way bigger than Linus Torvalds. The kernel would go on. We would all go on. People recently asked about the free software movement. Once the Free Software Foundation uh, basically removed Richard Stallman from his position. Well, how could the free software movement go on without Richard Stallman? Well, Richard Stallman is a 70-year-old man. And if you thought the free software movement had no future past Richard Stallman, then that thing's pretty much dead anyway. <laughs> I mean, that, that's the reality of it. If you equate these movements to one person, then they're not a viable movement anyway. 
I don't equate the free software movement as being a one man movement, though. There's many, many people out there that will keep fighting that fight. So. Yeah, Chris Titus is also in the chat. How you doing, Chris? Yeah, do YouTube downgrading to 480p just happened. Yeah, I noticed that on a stream I watched earlier. Was it this morning or it might have been last night? I tuned into somebody streaming and they bumped me down to 240p at some point. I don't know if that was YouTube doing that on purpose or if that stream just had buffering issues, but... I know the person was streaming in 1080, though, <laughs> so I don't know why I was getting 244p or whatever it was I was getting. Yeah, DT, you ever get an IT or Linux-related job? I have never worked in IT or any Linux-related field or any computer-related field. All right. Mr. Gaffs, is VS Code good? I wouldn't know. It's created by Microsoft, and it is an Electron app. Mr. Gaffs, I strongly recommend you taking a look at Vim or Emacs if you prefer. You might prefer Emacs, actually, if you like VS Code, which is a big bloated program that does a lot of stuff. Emacs is perfect. Uh, I wouldn't say it's perfect, but you may like that. I've done videos, a lot of videos on Vim and Emacs. Check them out. Um... There's also Atom out there, which is a free and open source editor, but it's Electron too. It's slow and bloated. Sublime is also slow and bloated, but and Sublime is proprietary software. I really hate that so many people use Sublime. It's, it's a very popular IDE. But I, I really wish you guys would check out some of the free and open source alternatives out there. Yeah, you should try CDE, the Common Desktop Environment. Yeah, I mean, I guess I could try it out, but I would never live in it because the CDE is not really developed anymore. It's been dead for decades, and you know, I run an Arch-based system, and in the A in the in the Arch wiki, they tell you that the common desktop environment actually has security bugs in it, and that really no one should use it. So basically, the Arch guys say, "Hey, this is in the repos. You shouldn't run it." <laughs> so. So I, I wouldn't want to run it, and I wouldn't want to put it on video, have thousands of people watch that video and think, oh, this is cool, I should install it, when, again, it, it's a security risk. I, I, just, I wouldn't be comfortable putting a video about that out there. Uh, yeah, Chris is also asking, do I use Microsoft Teams? I do not. I don't use any Microsoft products. Obviously, all my machines that I own are, are Linux and I don't have any Microsoft so even the stuff that they have Linux clients for I don't use now obviously at places of work you know certain jobs I've had in the past a lot of their machines would be running things like Windows or Windows Server or whatever they happen to be running and then I would have to use things like OneDrive and 365 and all that All right. Yeah, tell us about the magic that is Windows. Yeah, well, I, I've already left Windows. That was a one-day thing. Yeah, you guys like the, the Windows Tube video, huh? That was a fun one to make. What was What was funny about that is, obviously, I was joking, but everything I said in that video, I've actually heard people say in real life. There are people that run Windows and proprietary software that really talk about the people that run free software exactly like that. They're out there. You know, they think we're just a bunch of cheapskates. We refuse to pay for software. We know our software is bad, but we're just too cheap to buy good software. <laughs> yeah, Sublime Text is not really an IDE. Yeah. Yeah, Bread Moth, you use Teams for work? Well, I mean, it, you have to use what you have to use at work. That, that's one thing. I'm not really forced to use anything for the most part. And obviously all the machines here at my house, you know. I haven't, I haven't had a machine that ran Windows in 12 years, you know. 
Even the computers I buy, I typically will buy them without an operating system installed. Just because I don't want to have to pay the Windows tax. I, 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 don't, I don't want even Windows even on that machine when they ship it to me. Even though I know I'm going to format the drive and install my own operating system. I, I, give me a blank drive. Yeah, just give me an empty drive. Uh, best alternative to Zoom, if we're talking free and open source software, Jitsi. Jitsi's pretty good. It, it's getting better every time I try it. Jitsi is getting better. Here in the past few weeks, well, in the last couple of weeks especially, people have really been criticizing Zoom all of a sudden, mainly because Zoom has become popular. So once you're popular, you know, all these journalists out here are going to start trashing you, right? Uh, some of them are probably put up to or are paid to write these articles about Zoom, these negative articles about Zoom because of competitors to Zoom. Just throwing that out there, too. But yes, uh, Zoom is if you do video chat on Zoom. It, are you actually private? No. Same thing on Discord. If you do video chat on Discord or even voice chat on Discord, is anything you say private? No, because it's proprietary software. You can't expect to be private on that stuff. But this is not news, right? We know Discord and Zoom are not private. And you would have to be an idiot to do a voice chat on either Discord or Zoom and think it's private. If you want something private, if you want to send a message to somebody completely privately, you send them an encrypted email. right? You, you don't get on something like Zoom or Discord. You just don't. So I think some of those stories are a little overblown. I'm, I'm not not that Zoom or Discord are not as private as they could be. It's just, uh, did we not know this already? I'm I'm pretty sure we already knew this. <laughs> uh. So what's your favorite desktop environment or window manager? Don't have one. I think we've already mentioned. I've been in three or four different window managers this week. Like I like. On video, you guys see me in a different one all the time. Just whatever I log into. What do I think about the Cute browser? I'm going to get into that probably on a video soon because I want to discuss the Cute browser. Actually, I have two or three browsers I want to discuss. Uh, it might have been a video I would have made today had I actually had some time here at home. But again, I, I spent all day away from the house today and kind of took the day off so I don't know maybe tomorrow if I have a little time I may get into making that video but I do want to discuss uh, the cute browser the surf browser a little more and a uh, vim b which is a vim like uh, browser all three of those browsers are very similar so I probably discuss all of them in the same video because of how very similar those browsers are Let's see. I missed some of the chat here, guys. Let me get back. Have I ever wanted to get a core booted or Libra booted ThinkPad? I have considered it. I have considered it. I've thought about maybe uh, trying to talk trip code into Libra booting a ThinkPad for me. Either one that I bought and sent to sent to him, or if he already has some on hand, he's if he's got some inventory. You know, just buying one that he's already Libra booted. Yeah, do I have a pro favorite programming language? I'm not really a programmer. I don't really program in anything. I mean, I've done some web dev stuff. Uh, haven't done that in a, a while, but I used to be pretty good with PHP. Pretty comfortable in PHP. I'm okay in Python. Shell scripting counts. I mean, I'm... I can do bash scripting a little bit. I can usually get something done if I need it. Yeah, a Andy says, how are you able to learn other tiling window managers in short time? Because they're all the same, Andy. Once you've done it once, even though they're all written in different programming languages, it's not necessarily the specific steps. It's the process. It's the process of, oh, all right, I've got this problem. I'm going to solve it. I'm going to read through the documentation and figure it out. And, you know, and it's 
everything you do in Linux is kind of like that. And once you've done it a few times, it gets easier. I hope that makes sense. Once you've taken the time, for example, to learn the awesome window manager and to configure it to your liking, you know, figure out how to read the documentation and then edit that config file and, you know, do all this customization you want. You know what? I promise you the next window manager you, you try will be easier because it's the same process. You know, you'll go to a different website, read different documentation. The config file will look completely different, but it's all basically the same process. You know, uh, Chris was asking about Tox. I have not tried Tox. Yeah, you saw Luke Smith talking about it. Okay. I've had people ask me about it. Actually, I've had people ask me about Tox and QTox. I guess both very similar, maybe the same program or variations on the same program. I actually have it in my to-do list to actually take a look at it at some point. I've not gotten around to it. Yeah, Ron Singh says he zooms all friggin' day with his clients because, or sometimes Skype. Okay, yeah, I, I hate Skype. Skype's just a bad product. <laughs> Zoom is actually a good product. Zoom at least has good audio and good video. That's why I use it. As far as the privacy stuff, that doesn't bother me because I don't use Zoom for work or private. I, I don't Zoom with family and friends or anything. The only time I've used Zoom, you guys see it. It's on the YouTube channel. And privacy's not an issue there because, well, I mean, we're streaming it, right? So... Uh, yeah, I get a super chat here from uh, San. He says, thank you for making good movies on YouTube all the time from Japan. Appreciate that. Yeah, Gino says, is Luke Smith bloated? Um, I'm pretty sure he is the anti-bloat, right? If there was a, yeah, he's like the anti-Christ of bloat. He's the anti-bloat, right? I mean, according to uh, Luke, didn't he make a video one time? He said Bash was bloated, which was very strange. Uh, I don't care how how bloated it is. I I like my Bash shell, <laughs> you know. Uh, but he also made a video one time, didn't he? Say he he, he loved System D, which if you're anti bloat, uh, I don't know. I I don't have a problem with System D either, though. Uh, DT, can you play YouTube videos in Surf? Yes, they do play. Your, your, yours say they're corrupted for you? Okay, well, I, I would say, you know, it might vary from distro to distro, depending on what distro you're on. It's probably a problem with the WebKit GTK package. You may want to compile WebKit GTK yourself instead of using the one that's in your repository. It, they actually recommend that on the Suckless Surf page. For me, in Arch, the WebKit GTK package is the latest and greatest package, and it works just fine for me. I, I don't have problems playing video, but if you're having some issues, you may try that. All right. And I did mention this was just going to be a 30 minute chat. We've <laughs> been going on an hour. Uh, let's see. But I haven't quite finished the Corona. I'm, I'm drinking slow this evening. How to get more people interested to donate their time with FOSS projects, developing, testing, investigating code? Well, Ju Juzu, great question. How do we get more people interested in donating their time? Well, right now, that's easy. Everybody's got some free time, and that's pretty much been what I've told people to start doing. And everybody is, hey, if you got some free time, pick a problem. Pick a problem, solve it. Uh, uh, your problem already exists out there, and you know it's part of a FOSS project. Help those guys. Help them debug. Help them test. Help them with programming if you have those skills. Help them with documentation. Help them with translating. If you speak multiple languages, everybody likes translations. Uh, Milan is asking, what are the differences between DWM and Qtile once they are set up? You mentioned you only have one monitor. Okay. Well, if you only have one monitor, the differences are not going to be that noticeable. If, if you are on a multi-monitor system, they handle multi-monitors completely differently. Uh, but if you have a one-monitor system... 
uh, Qtile is ready to go out of the box. You can actually use Qtile <laughs> when you install that DWM. You're going to have to patch it to make it usable. Now, what I personally recommend you guys do is I recommend you guys open a terminal. Let me zoom in. If you're using an Arch based system, what I would do is I would yay, if you have yay installed, dash capital S, and then I would install dwm dash, dash distrotube dash git from the AUR. And I would install that package. Uh, installing it here actually won't hurt anything, so I've already got it installed, but rewriting it is, I mean, it's my config, so. And then if I wanted to restart, well, I better not restart the window manager because it's going to move all my windows around because that is a bit of a bug with DWM when you restart it. The windows don't stay on the monitors that I put them on. They'll all appear on the one monitor with focus, and then I'd have to rearrange everything. But that's all you need to do. If you want to want to configure DWM, just try to use mine. Um, if you want to configure it ST, I mentioned the ST terminal, the simple terminal is also a bit of a pain because when you first download it, it's not patched for scroll back and transparency and things like that. Just do a yay dash capital S ST dash distro tube dash get. And that will give you my build of uh, ST that is in the AUR. And reinstalling this also shouldn't hurt anything. I don't think I've updated it since the last time I've pushed it. Make sure everything, yep, yeah, all my key bindings work. Yep, yeah, that's that's my uh, build of ST there. So that's one way to try out DWM. But really, if you're kind of new to tiling window managers, DWM is not the one to try. If you're new to tiling window managers, I would also say stay away from Xmonad. Xmonad's my favorite tiling window manager, but if you're new to tiling window managers and new to Linux, Xmonad is not the best one to try out first because when you first install Xmonad, it doesn't come with a panel or menus or anything like that. You log in and you have a black screen. No wallpaper. It's just a black screen and nothing else. If you don't know the default key binding to open a terminal, you can't do anything when you first log into Xmonad. I can tell you the default key binding because I've installed Xmonad a few times over the years is Alt Shift Enter. Alt Shift Enter will actually give you an X term. You have to have X term already installed on the system because that's the terminal it expects to find. If you for some reason don't have X term, you're gonna have a real heck of a time in Xmonad if you don't know what you're doing. The trick with those really minimal window managers is install everything you need ahead of time. So if I'm installing Xmonad, I already know I need Xterm, I need Dmenu, I need a few things on the system before I ever even log in to Xmonad. Otherwise, you're going to log in and you're just going to have to log right back out anyway because you're not going to be able to do anything. All right. Yeah, time flies. Yeah, I, I was only going to just hang out with you guys for a few minutes this evening, but I don't I don't mind hanging out for a little longer. Oh, uh, yeah, Nat is asking me again about Docker. I don't really play with Docker. I probably should take a look at Docker in depth at some point. Obviously, mostly as a Linux desktop user, I don't really play with Docker that often. You know, obviously for desktop containerization, that's kind of why snaps, flat packs, app images were created. They were basically bringing that Docker sort of technology, what Docker's typically used on servers. They were trying to bring that kind of technology to the desktop. Uh, DT, which version of Arco are you running? Uh, wh well, whatever version of Arco I installed, obviously, is not going to be. It's my configs, right? So I probably installed either the I probably installed the awesome or the Qtile version. But again, I've got all my configs on my GitLab, so I just pulled down my own custom configs anyway. Whatever, whatever they shipped, you know, it's, I over I overwrite with my own configs anyway. So it really doesn't matter what I started with. It's 
it's kind of my my Arco Linux at this point, right? This is that's kind of why you know some of you guys you know you don't really do any kind of distro reviews um, much anymore. No, because I think it's kind of pointless. Because okay, I I download the latest distro. Ubuntu 2004 beta came out today. I download it. Are we going to take a look at it? Well, I could take a look at it today with you guys, but didn't really use it because it just came out today, right? Didn't really test it extensively in any way. But here's the, the flip side of that argument. Say I use Ubuntu 2004 for the next six months. Six months from now, I make a video on Ubuntu 2004, I promise you. It won't even look anything like Ubuntu 2004 did when I installed it day one, right? Because you guys know me. I'm going to hack on it. I'm going to strip out all that GNOME crap. I'm going to throw on some minimal window managers, a bunch of CLI programs. And so there's no point in me reviewing it day one. There's also no point in me using it for a few months and reviewing it then because by then I've already changed the operating system completely from the way it shipped. So that, that's kind of why I don't do too many of those videos. I know sometimes you guys want to see that stuff. So I, I try to do one or two a month. Like when Ubuntu 2004 actually has its official release, I'm sure I'm going to do a video about it because you guys will be expecting it. When Fedora has its big release, you know, I always check out the Fedora releases. But for the most part, if I'm going to take a look at a distro, it has to be something that really interests me. Like I, you know, somebody has a big release or they're doing something interesting. And I say, hmm, you know what? Me personally, I want to check that out. And then I'll, I'll check it out. But these days, you know, that, that's rare. <laughs> All right. Uh, let's see. DT, what's the big box thing to the left of the Matrix laptop? Which left? If you're this left, that's my computer. It's a really, really gigantic tower. <laughs> gigantic tower. Huge. <laughs> like that. Uh. All right. Yeah, I had a super chat here from Cam. He's like, yeah, thanks for the great, consistent Linux content. Thank you, Cam. Appreciate that. Oh. Oh, I get a super chat from Titus. And of course, we already knew Ubuntu is the devil. <laughs> yeah. yeah, Ubuntu's all right. I don't mind Ubuntu. If, if, if there are some things out there in the free and open source world that are the, uh, the devil, uh, Ubuntu is pretty low on that list, in my opinion. I, but I'm just going to keep quiet. I, I don't want to throw out anything that I think is is the devil. The people that do work, especially the people that put out free and open source software, you never want to you know, trash their work. Even if you don't like it, I mean, those people, they're making software for somebody. If it's not for you, that's fine. I do know I made some of you guys mad when I said uh, I agreed with Alan Pope. Yeah, just give everybody Ubuntu as their first distro. Just don't even present them with any choice. Just, hey, here, here's a USB stick. Install it. Because <laughs> that, that's what I do. That's what I do with everybody. <laughs> and some of you guys were like, no, that is a horrible idea. But then you were like, some of you guys, what really confused me is like, Man, I completely agree with you. You're right. Don't give new users a choice. It confuses them. Just give them one distro. But you're giving them the wrong distro, man. You should give them my distro. <laughs> like, what the hell does it matter? My Ubuntu or your distro or man? Like, uh, don't give them Ubuntu. Give them Mint. It looks better. Well, that's kind of subjective, isn't it? <laughs> or don't give them Ubuntu, give them Manjaro. They're going to love a rolling release. It's like, oh, Lord, <laughs> please don't do that. Don't put your grandma on an arch based distro. But I know some of you guys are out there doing it, and I hope you're prepared for that support. <laughs> uh, yeah, thank you, Chris. Yeah, my trolling level skilled up. Uh, 
Uh, can you do a video on KDE customization? That is from Logic. <laughs> I don't know anything about KDE. I, I guess I could do a video on it, but I, I literally... I mean, I would have to spend some weeks in KDE Plasma. I don't know anything about Plasma. Are you? You must be new to the channel, Logic. Uh, I mean, I get... Uh, um, that's not a vid, you know, it, like I, I make videos on a bunch of different topics, a wide variety of topics on this channel, Linux related topics. But there are some topics that are just not suited for me. And I know I wouldn't, it wouldn't be a good video if I made that video. Like me showing you a video on how to customize KDE, that's not a video I should be making. That is a video that. Michael over at Tux Digital should be making. If you're not following Tux Digital on YouTube, subscribe to his channel. Ask Michael to uh, tell you all about KDE because I think he actually contributes to the project and he is a big time <laughs> Plasma fanboy. So ask him about that. Yeah, Titus in the chat. You're a Plasma fanboy? I thought you liked Gnome, but if you, yeah, get Chris on that then if he knows some Plasma. Uh, Big Daddy Linux, Rocco over at Big Daddy Linux. They're older videos, but he had some some really good uh, KDE customization videos that he made a couple of years back. Probably much of it still works on the, the more modern versions of Plasma that are out. Uh, let's see. ET, I know you use a tiling window manager, but what's your preferred desktop environment if you had to pick one? I could use any of them because what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn them into a tiling window manager. <laughs> uh, you guys trolled me for a while. Uh, some of you guys have been subscribed for a while. Remember this, but a few months back, maybe, maybe nearly a year ago, somebody, we did a live stream. And I asked you guys to pick my next window manager or something. I threw GNOME in the list just for fun. That's what you guys picked. And I lived in GNOME for 30 days. How did I live in GNOME? Well, I installed a hotkey daemon, the simple X hotkey daemon, SXHKD. I basically turned GNOME into a tiling window manager. I hacked on GNOME to where it basically had the same look and feel, all my key bindings that I've been using in Xmonad. You know, I just basically made it do what I wanted to do. It, it was in no way <laughs> resembled GNOME. But yeah, that's what I would do. I mean, I would just make it my own. <laughs> uh, I guess Chris is not a GNOME fanboy. Must have had you confused with somebody else, Chris. Ah, uh, Baby Wogue. That's the GNOME fanboy. <laughs> that, that's the one I was... Yeah. I should I should have remembered that he's the one that does the all the Japanese anime. Yeah, Ben, yeah, appreciate your content, DT. Hey, are you still rocking the Ergo Docs Easy? I just made a video about it two days ago. <laughs> yes, I've used the Ergo Docs Easy since I bought the keyboard a year ago. Since I made that first video on it, that's been the only keyboard sitting at my desk. It's the only uh, keyboard I use here on my main production workstation uh, every, since I made that video a year ago. Um, obviously, I'd use my laptop keyboards, and if I'm at work, you know, they're traditional 110 key QWERTY keyboards. But it's pretty easy for me to actually switch between the ErgoDox and a regular keyboard now. I've kind of gotten used to it where I can just go from this weird split design keyboard to a regular keyboard and you know not have to fumble around those first couple of months there was a lot of fumbling like when you switch like mentally you got to kind of think about it okay i'm on this keyboard now controls not in the same spot tabs not in the same you know let's see dt i've made no attempts to add transparency but i want to add it how do i do that what is compton I heard it was necessary for transparency, yes. So just adding transparency to a program doesn't add transparency to it. 
you have to have a compositor running. If you're running a, a full desktop environment like GNOME or Plasma or XFCE or Monte, they already have compositors running. It's included with the desktop environment. That's why it's called a desktop environment, not a window manager, because it includes a bunch of extra cruft, like a compositor. If you installed a, a window manager, Openbox, Fluxbox, i3, Awesome, any of the other tiling window managers out there, you don't have a compositor. You need to install one. Compton is in everybody's distros. Compton has actually been renamed to PyCom now. So if you're on an Arch-based system, P-I-C-O-M is actually the name of the package. If you're on a Debian or an Ubuntu-based system, it's still called Compton in the repositories because they haven't updated to the latest version, which will be PyCom. But you just install Compton, and then you launch Compton. You need to include Compton in whatever auto-start script you use. It needs to start every time you log into your window manager. And then transparency will work in your terminals. And if you have a dock that's transparent or a panel that's transparent, you know, they'll all actually have some transparency now. If you don't have a compositor running, then even if you set your dock or panel or terminal to be transparent, it won't be transparent. It'll just be a solid color. All right. DT, favorite animal. Don't say penguin. Uh, I, why would I say penguin? I don't think I've ever actually seen a penguin in real life. Favorite animal. You know, I've always been kind of a cat person. I think they're very regal animals. Dogs. I've never understood the appeal of owning a dog. Cats are... Uh, j just prefer cats because when a cat looks at you you know he's looking like dead into your soul and he's actually thinking in his head man if you were small enough that i could kill and eat you i would or a dog you know is really submissive he's a weak animal yeah dt have you totally removed pseudo i have not totally removed pseudo from my system i probably could it, it, I don't know if it would really break anything or not. I haven't actually looked that deeply into it, but do as works. And some of you guys have asked me about do you know muscle memory, right? You you have a you're so used to typing sudo. How are you going to install do as and remember do as you know instead of sudo? Well, you could alias it. So you could go into your vim or not vim um, your bash rc. And write alias equals, and what you want to do is alias, well, alias sudo equals, and the command, this is very important because some of you guys are doing this wrong and you're saying you're getting, getting errors. Do as space dash dash. And that's what you want to alias sudo to. Do as space dash dash. And why do you want to do that? Well, because do as has a few flags. You see A, C, N, S, U. It has its own flags. And that's important to know because if I do a, how about do as Pac-Man dash S, Y, U. Remember, do as had some flags. S was one of them and U was one of them. It's gonna ask for my password. Now that worked. The reason it worked is because I did an alias in my bash RC. I forgot about that. Don't let me. Normally that would not work. And the reason that wouldn't work, it would give you an error, is because it doesn't know what you want to do with these flags. Are these flags for Pac-Man? Are these flags for do as? The proper way to run this is do as dash dash and then Pac-Man dash SYU. It basically says every flag I give beyond this point belongs to Pac-Man and doesn't belong to do as. So if you do an alias, make sure you alias sudo to do as space dash dash. That way you never have to worry about running into that problem where you have the, the flags that conflict.
All right, uh, DT, why Arco Linux as opposed to default Arch? Because it's the one I installed. No, no reason. No reason for Arco, no reason against Arco. Uh, like I said, the distros are all the same to me for the most part. Arco was the one I wanted to install and try out. I think I originally I installed one of the Arco Linux B tiling window manor, manager editions. I think it was either the awesome or the Qtile edition, and I was going to review it on the channel. So I installed it on my new computer that I just got at the time, and then I just stayed on it, because why not? I had a working install. If it works, why wipe it out? I know I've missed some of the chat. I do apologize, guys. Yeah, uh, Thanks for the super chat, Steven. Appreciate that, buddy. Yeah, PICOM. P-I-C-O-M. That's correct. Uh, let's see. Yeah, Wolfgang has a great channel. Yeah, Wolfgang is great, too. He doesn't put out content terribly often. At least it doesn't seem like it these days. I don't know if it's has anything to do with the quarantine or anything or he's a younger guy I'm sure he's probably in college too so probably life commitments it can get in the way of, of YouTube right alright yeah can we do these live chats more often I'd like to I'd like to I don't do live streaming very often I prefer doing pre-recorded content for the most part but Every now and then I try to get some of these in. Yeah, I thought PyCom and Compton were separately developed as Compton doesn't seem to have been updated in a long time. Well, that's basically what it is. It's just you fork, you fork Compton, right? And you, you rename it. When you fork something, you rename it. You can't keep the same name, right? It's not your name. But you can't just take over somebody else's dead project either unless they give you permission. So you, what you do is you just get cloned, right, Compton. Yeah. Start a new project, right? Change all the instances of Compton to a new name. Call it PyCom. Create a new repository. Upload it. Tell everybody to start helping you out. That's the way we do it around here. It's the way we do it in free and open source. We just fork it. All right. Yeah, I removed sudo and used do as now, says Hunter. Oh, okay. The only program I know for sure that would give me a problem with not having sudo, because it has a hard dependency on it, is yay. I showed you guys installing packages from the AUR with EA. And you remember the very last step when I installed my packages from the AUR? It asked for a sudo password because sudo is actually a hard dependency in Yay. It expects sudo to be on everybody's system. I don't know if just simply aliasing do as or sudo to do as would work for Yay. Maybe, maybe not. But you couldn't even install Yay without having sudo on the system because, again, it's a hard dependency. When you go to install it, it's going to say, hey, we got to bring in sudo too. Hmm. Uh, also, is there a reason you chose that do as port over open do as? It was just the one I came across in the AUR. Yeah, I, I, I did. When I made that video, you guys were like, yeah, but you got this other package also here. Yeah. I don't know if they're really that different or not. But I did go back in that video, I think in the show description, if you read it, I was like, hey, you know, this is the one I downloaded from the uh, AUR, but there is one in the actual Arch repository. It's called OpenDS. That's probably the one you guys want to check out first. Yes, DWM worth switching to from Awesome Window Manager. I, I can't tell you it would be worth it. To be honest, DWM, I like of all the window managers I've tiling window managers that I've tried, you know, and I've tried what eight, ten on the channel and lived in myself for at least a month at a time to show you guys those window managers. DWM would be 
and I like the window manager. I really like the, I'm in it today. It's probably not one I would just generally recommend people to use on a daily basis. It's going to have some issues. I'm going to tell you that right now. You're going to have some issues with it. There's going to be some stuff you got to work out with it. Because it's so minimal, it's so suckless in its philosophy. All right, guys. Well, I'm going to kill the stream here in a few more minutes. So you guys got any last minute questions, go ahead and get them so we can actually get it recorded in the YouTube chat for all of time. All right. Would you ever use Trizen instead of Yay? I have installed Trizen before and it was fine. Um, typically, I don't install my own AUR helpers. Typically, if there's one installed, I use it. Manjaro forever. I don't know if they still do. Manjaro, some of their community editions used to have Yowert still installed. And if it was installed, I used it. And people were like, well, it hadn't been in development for like six years. You shouldn't use it. Well, it still worked. <laughs> so, and the Manjaro guy shipped it and it was already there. I just used it. You know, typically I just use things that are already there. Yay seems to be the one that everybody ships with now. So if Yay is on the system, I'll use it. If it shipped with Trizen, I'd have no problem using Trizen. Some of the other ones I've used in the past, there was one called Pack AUR. I don't know if that one's a, one of the ones that is now dead. There, there's a whole bunch of them that now seem like they don't get any development at all. I think Yay and Trizen are about the only ones that anybody actually still contributes to. Yeah, Morality says, now that you've adopted Duaz, is there any chance of you trying more OpenBSD ports such as CWM? I mean, C is higher letter than D, so it must be better. I don't know about that. Don't know anything about CWM. So, can't comment on that. But I'm glad you asked me about OpenBSD ports and not OpenBSD itself. Because I, I do get people asking me, hey man, why don't you just wipe out Arco and install OpenBSD? Well, there's a problem. You know, I actually do a YouTube channel, right? So, uh, I have to use an operating system that actually works for what I'm, I'm doing, you know. The BSDs are not a great choice, and OpenBSD would definitely not be a great choice, right? I mean, how many people that create media are you see out there running OpenBSD machines? There's a reason for, but you guys, I, I, this is, it's weird. You guys sometimes ask me for stuff that's just impossible to do. Like, hey, man, why don't you uh, wipe out all of Xorg and install Wayland? Yeah, yeah. Do you guys not want me to ever put out any video content ever? <laughs> like, yeah. Why? Uh, we're, the, some of the questions I get and the comments I get just amaze me sometimes. I was like, I tell you what, why don't you remove Xorg completely from your system? You tell me how that works and you, you get back to me. <laughs> Tell you what, why don't you make a video about it and you send me the link to your video. <laughs> uh, let's see. I know this is a re repeated question, but will you ever consider using a floating window manager again like Openbox? Yeah, I've got Openbox on my system now. I typically don't, I'm not, I don't make videos in it. Uh, um, not that it's a, a bad window manager. It's one of my favorites, but tiling window managers make recording a lot easier on this multi-monitor system because, you know, I can place the windows exactly where I want, the, the exact same size, so recording in OBS is a lot easier, where in open box I'd have to manually resize the windows and put them exactly in the right spot. But yeah, I, I, I could have logged into open box and did this stream Tonight, I still have all my open box configs and everything.
but it goes back to the side. I can, I can make anything work, right? How much as I don't like GNOME. I mean, I, I, if GNOME was the only desktop environment window manager out there, I, I could make it work. Right? You know, I'm not, I'm not one of those, uh, software snubs I mean, really at anything. You know, you guys, you guys have been asking me about the terminal emulator. I showed you guys, yay, uh, uh, not yay, uh, ST earlier, me installing ST with yay. But, you know, I'm in DWM today. Uh, this is my build of DWM and my build of ST. You guys are like, man, I thought you installed Alacrity. Where's Alacrity? Well, Alacrity's still here, dog. <laughs> I still got it on the system. Guess what? <laughs> Termite is also on the system. URXVT is also on the system. You know what? Is Xterm also on the system? <laughs> like every terminal emulator I've ever used is still on the system. And I still use them all. Matter of fact, depending on what window manager I log into, some of them still call upon the different terminal emulators, depending on uh, how up to date some of my configs are. But you're like, well, you must not like Alacrity anymore. You're using ST today. Well, when I switched to Alacrity, it wasn't because I didn't like ST anymore. I was just trying something different, right? All right. DT, have you ever heard of Rene... Reby, I, I'm, I'm sorry, I do not know who that is. He's the creator of T2 Linux and has a YouTube channel. Okay, um, I may have to check that out. I'm subscribed to a million YouTube channels. That's another thing is uh, sometimes you guys ask, hey, you watch a bunch of YouTube? Who do you watch on YouTube? What videos you watch on YouTube? I don't have time. <laughs> like I'm seriously subscribed to like 150 tech or Linux related, programming related, <laughs> Vim related YouTube channels. And I don't watch any of them. I'm there's prop some of those channels I seriously have not seen a video of those guys channels in months. Typically the only YouTubers that I watch, you know, sometimes I'll see a title or like a clickbait title or a catchy thumbnail. And I'm like, you know what, I'll check that out. And, you know, I, I, if it really grabs my attention, I'll check it out. But typically the folks that do live streams, I'm much more likely to catch their stuff. Because if I'm here at the computer and I'm actually working, I'll turn on their live stream. And usually not watching it, I'll put it on this the far left monitor and I've got it playing, just, you know, listening to the audio. But typically when somebody's live streaming, yeah, if I happen to be around and I'm not recording, yeah, I'll jump on. But I don't get to watch as much pre-recorded content from some of the other guys as, as really I would like to. And to be honest, even if I had a lot of free time, I'm not sure if I'd watch that much because, I mean, I do so much Linuxy kind of stuff anyway. A lot of the stuff they're doing is a lot of the same kind of stuff I'm doing. I'm not even sure if it would interest me, to be honest. <laughs> would I really want to watch it? Mm, probably not. You know, I want to go watch you know, stuff that has absolutely nothing to do with Linux or maybe nothing to do with tech at all, you know. All right. Yeah, DT needs to be in NCIS New Orleans. Is that a real TV show? I don't have a TV. I don't. I mean, I got a TV in the house. I don't actually have a TV in this room. I don't watch TV though. I can go weeks at a time without turning one on. All right. All right, guys. Well, let's go ahead and kill it for the evening. I do appreciate you guys hanging out with me for this. You know, this quick 30 minute Q&A session that lasted 90 minutes, <laughs> but this was fun. I just wanted to do something quick, but we had a good time here. You guys, I hope you guys enjoyed it. This was, this was fun. I know I don't do too many of these kind of interactive live streams, and I really should do more of them. 
Yeah, how do I configure the bar in DWM? Asked Milan. Well, yeah, we will answer one more question before we go because Milan, I know you were the one that asked about the uh, Git clone earlier. And I'm telling you, <laughs> you really, DWM's not the one you want to start with, but since you already did, what you want to do, go to my dot files on my GitLab. And actually, not my dot files. Cancel that, Milan. Go to. No, no, I was right. Sorry, Milan. Do go to my dot files. And in my dot files, you see this uh, directory here called DWM blocks. Yeah, you want this. What basically you want to get clone my dot files repository. It's very large, unfortunately. Uh, and really all you need is these files here. And then you need to compile DWB or DWM blocks. DWM blocks, my version, calls upon these scripts that make these little widgets. <laughs> Where are these scripts? Where they're located in my dot files in dot local slash bin. These are the six scripts that are running in my DWM blocks. Also, you want to make sure that local dot local slash bin is in your shells path. Now, if none of that made sense, uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> this is a little complicated, though. I mean, for a first kind of Tyler, DWM is really, it's tough. DWM stuff and especially Xmonad. Those are not the ones to start with. All right. Yeah. Take care, DT, says uh, Vin Apris. Appreciate that, buddy. Yeah. How do I configure the bar? We already took care of that. All right. All right, guys. Well, I'm going to go ahead and kill the stream. Appreciate you guys. Before I go, of course, I want to thank a few people. Need to thank these folks, my supporters over on Patreon. I want to thank each and every one of these ladies and gentlemen for all they do to support me. And I want to thank you guys for hanging out on YouTube. Without you guys, obviously, we couldn't have had this great little Q&A session we had. All right. Peace.